Fangoria is a name synonymous with horror fans. Starting in 1979, Fangoria magazines captured the world's attention with their first publications. Starting as a fantasy film magazine, the first few issues had a hard time gaining traction. But their look at Tom Savini's work in Dawn of the Dead sparked an interest in readers, so the company started to pursue horror. And what a profitable decision that was! In the 80s and 90s, Fangoria was on top of the world. It was the source to find coverage on the latest horror films, icons of the genre, as well as director and crew interviews. Fangoria was so ingrained in horror film culture that in 1990, they decided to spread their brand and get into the horror film industry themselves. They planned to start releasing one new horror movie every year from here on out. Their plan was to become a multimedia horror juggernaut. So how did that go for them? Well, the answer may just warp your mind. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Mind Warp was the first feature-length movie from Fangoria Films. It was to set the tone and to show the world that Fangoria was more than just writing about horror films they could make their own. With all the experience they had and all the ties that they've gained, how could they go wrong? Fangoria knew how to market and gain an audience in the horror community, so they brought in cult horror icons Bruce Campbell from the Evil Dead series and Angus Scrim, who was the tall man from the Phantasm films. Fangoria also knew that fans loved blood, so violence and gore was a huge focus. With two fan-favorite actors and plenty of red stuff to go around, Mind Warp was set to be a hit, except there was one major problem, the budget. With a budget of only $1 million, it was hard to compete with major motion pictures at the time. Even if Mind Warp was only made to go straight to video, they had to contend with not only Hollywood films, but other low-budget straight-to-video production companies like Full Moon Pictures. While Fangoria did release films after Mind Warp, their planned yearly release schedule didn't last very long. After Children of the Night in 99 and Severed Ties in 92, that was it for Fangoria Films. Did Mind Warp doom Fangoria Films, or is this a shining star amongst a failed film company? Let's dive into the plot and find out. The initial idea is solid and way ahead of its time. The year is 2037, and the world was destroyed by nuclear war. Humanity is unsustainable outside in the nuclear winter, so whatever is left of humanity has to remain inside. Since they can't venture out, technology is made to provide humans with all their basic needs. There's a machine for food and a place to use the restroom, but what do you do with all of your free time? Well, much like today, they surf the internet. But since this was 1990, the idea of the internet was very different. Instead of using a device like a computer or phone, they physically plug themselves into the mainframe. This world that they can live in can be anything they want it to be. They can go anywhere or do anything. This is basically the Matrix, way before the Matrix, but you can actually control it. It's a utopia, and the idea is pretty amazing for 1990. Well, Judy is fed up with this life. She doesn't want to go on these imaginary adventures anymore. She wants to actually experience life. She shares her desires with her mother, but her mother is so much aloof that all she cares about is the dream world. She laughs it off. When Judy asks about her father, her mother simply just doesn't remember what happened to him. In an attempt to wake up her mother, Judy jacks into the internet to invade her mother's dream, but accidentally kills her. The mainframe has an avatar, this system's operator, and it communicates with Judy. Judy claims that she wants a real-life experience, something outside of the computer, and the system's operator obliges. Judy wakes up to her mother dead in real life, and police officers rush in and drug Judy. When she wakes up, she's buried in the sand. She's surrounded by nothing in the desert but these crosses and bodies on them. While looking for help, she falls into a sand pit. These deformed humans called crawlers save her just to tie her up again. Luckily, our hero Stover, played by Bruce Campbell, comes to the rescue. He defeats the crawlers in bloody fashion and saves Judy. He takes Judy to his hut and teaches her all about his world. The underground is infested with these crawlers, these 
flesh-eating deformed people. The sand and atmosphere can deform the skin, so it's best to stay bundled up outside and to wash yourself off after being out. Stover explains that there were people who survived that weren't part of the Dreaming program. His people despised the Dreamers. Stover's loved ones died, and instead of burying them where the crawlers would eventually get to him, he put them on the crosses. He is the last remaining human. He teaches Judy how to hunt, how to avoid crawler traps, and how to survive in this new world. One night they are attacked by crawlers, and they are brought down to the deepest depths of the underground. Stover is forced to be a slave and to salvage the land for useful items. Judy is eventually introduced to the leader of the crawlers, an intelligent man with a wicked flesh mask, played by the one and only Angus Scrim. The leader chops up a traitor into soup, and everyone takes a skull and drinks the traitor's blood. Who is this leader, and what connection does he have to Judy? Will Judy and Stover escape and return to the Dreamer computer world? The ending will sure make your mind warp. Mind Warp is a fast-paced, action-packed, and gore-heavy sci-fi cyberpunk spectacle. For the budget, it's pretty awesome, and has everything you want with a weekend rental vibe. It's not perfect, though. The film has a hard time staying focused, and the climax does falter a bit. It tries to do too much, and unfortunately, I think it suffers because of that. It has a little bit of everything, but not enough of anything to come as a must-watch. It's good and worth seeing, but it's not a film where you have to drop everything to go see it. If it's on, or you see it streaming, or you just want something that you don't have to take too seriously, Mind Warp will totally satisfy, but it's not something that will change your life. Just saying Bruce Campbell without any involvement of Sam Raimi should tell you what kind of movie this is. Now, while I love Bruce, his movies are never A-tier unless Raimi is involved, but hey, at least they'll always be entertaining. I recommend Mind Warp knowing that it's not going to be for everyone. It's a fun, bloody little romp, and if that sounds like your cup of tea, totally check it out. And that's all I have for tonight, so thank you so much for watching, and sweet dreams, everyone. You want to know a secret? I freaking love Bruce Campbell. I'm even wearing one of his shirts right here. Um, what's your favorite Bruce Campbell movie? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Again, thanks for watching.